welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I've got a fun hexagon project for us today. It's creating a garbage can. And as simple of a um, tutorial as this sounds, that the methods that we're going to use today are, are uh, valuable modeling techniques that are used or have the ability to be used in pretty much any and every um, modeling project that you would ever want to uh, create. So I want to use a reference image and I went to Google and I typed in garbage cans and I saved an image. Now I need to present project that image that reference image here on my desktop. So under the Properties tab, I'm going to come over here to Scene Tree, click on Properties here. I'm going to enable my back reference grid here. And I want to put a check mark here so it projects a, a photograph. Now I'm going to click on over here and navigate my way on my desktop to where my image is. And there's my trash can. In Photoshop, I took this image in Photoshop and I added these red lines in here. And I want to take just a, f a few moments and explain the purpose of these lines um, because they are invaluable in getting an understanding of what to look for when you before you begin creating something so that you know how to lay it out in your modeling program. So in looking at this image, it's I've got red lines that that point to the various character distinctions in this model. For example, this line is pointing to this bottom rim. This line is pointing to the bottom of these vertical ribs. This line is pointing to the top of the vertical ribs where they end and it looks like from this reference image which is not the greatest in the world but it's all I had it looks like there's a lip here very similar to the one down there and it looks like there's another lip right up here so in between these two lips there's some dead space here and in between the top of the bottom lip and the bottom of these ribs it looks like there is some more dead space so when when I go to start subdividing this I want to make sure that I have horizontal lines in my subdivision which reflect all these characteristics that I need to account for when I go to model that so first thing I want to do is start with a cylinder. Now here's my cylinder. Let me change my modeling light. Uh, I'm going to choose, oh, I, the lowest I can choose in se sections is 2 and that's fine. But uh, this looks like it has about 24. If it has more, well, no big deal. We'll certainly convey that this is a garbage can even with 24. And I'm not going to put caps on the tops and bottoms, so I'm not going to use this button here which says close all. I'm just going to validate it and start with a hollow tube. I'm going to use my select edges. I'm going to loop this bottom edge. Select that edge, loop it, and I'm just going to bring taper in the bottom of it a little bit. I know this is a perspective view, but uh, I believe some garbage cans that I've seen do have sort of a tapered bottom to it. So that's my tapered bottom. Now I need to start adding my subdivisions to account for the characteristics of this model. So uh, with my select edges, I'm going to loop that bottom selection. Under vertex modeling, I'm going to click on the second tool here and extract that edge and bring it up just a little bit. doesn't have to be much. Probably that is too much because this bottom lip is just really small. 
Now with that selection of edges, I'm going to extract them up, and they will be the bottom of the vertical ribs. Come up here to this top one, and I'm going to extract that. Oop, extract that, and I'm just going to bring it down, and this will be the where the top of the ribs are. And that looks good. And I'm going to extract that. This is that little dead space in between the top of the vertical ribs and where this first rib or edge begins. So I need to create one more for, for my edge. And this one looks like it's kind of wide, so I will account for that and make it kind of wide. Now I need to create another subdivision for this other dead space that's in there. And one more for the lip, for the top lip. And I can probably bring the top down a little bit. Okay, let's look at what we've got. Uh, oh, uh, let me loop that. I can delete those. Okay, now this is... Uh, going to be a little confusing here when I start off doing this, but just bear with me. I think it will it will help illustrate some things. Um, oh, I don't want that one. I want that one, and I want that one. I want to loop those. Okay, the selection of faces that I just made are where these edges are, or these lips are, that, that uh, protrude out from the garbage can. So just to uh, show things a little bit better. I'm going to add a color to them. Let's add a nice bright color. Okay, so this is going to be our edges. Now this here and this here, these selected faces are going to be the dead space, the space that nothing gets applied to. So I'm going to create a color for them and I'll pick a nice bluey color. Now, this is going to be our ribs, so I will create a new color for them. And, oh, a yellow color should be good. Okay, the green are where our ribs are, so I guess we could start with those first. Let me loop that. Now, you know what? I'm going to start with my ribs first. I'm just going to select one of those, and I'm going to hit... No, I don't want to hit loop. I want to hit ring. I'm just going to hit my ring command and select all of those uh, edges there. I'm going to come over here to my edge tools. I'm going to click on this first one. Now, what I want to do is I want to extract around them. So I'm going to grab this blue handle here, and let me back up. I guess I didn't do it correctly. I grab this blue handle. There we are. Now I'm just going to try to divide this in the middle and notice what it has done. It has right off the bat created the polygonal subdivision that mimics these vertical ribs. Now since these ribs protrude from the can, I'm just going to use my axis tool here, my, my all axis tool and I'm going to expand them out just a little bit, not too much. And I'm just eyeballing it here. I, there's no numeric setting that I could even think to give you. Okay. Now, by doing it, it expanded them outward, but it also increased their length. So I just want to grab the y-axis scale, and I just want to bring that length down. And that might be a little too much. Let me bring them in a little bit. There we are. I'm going to select faces. I'm going to select these green areas that are going to be the lip of our garbage can. I'll loop those. Come over here to my sweep surface tool. I'm going to use the X, uh, radial function. And all I'm doing is just creating a little lip. So let me zoom in here and create a little lip for this. I guess that looks good. Okay, so now you see that the colors that I have assigned to the can reflect the characteristics of the 
or the various sections in, of characteristics that apply to the can. And all those subdividing uh, edges that we did allowed us to make all these various selections. Well, I'm going to get rid of all these colors. We don't need them anymore. I, uh, I hope what I set out to do by using the domain colors accomplished its goal. Okay, we're right back to our original default color. Let me apply one level of smoothing to this. Let me click off of it. Now watch what happens when I change my color, um, rendering color here. Look at that. We've, in just a few minutes, we've created an absolutely perfect looking garbage can that mimics something that you'd see in real life. Oh, okay, the profile up here is, doesn't exactly match, but when you look at this, you think garbage can. Now, I haven't put a top or a bottom on it. Well, we will do that in the second tutorial where we will, where we will create the hardware that goes for the handles and the lid for the, for the top. I guess right now, I will bring up my dynamic geometry. I'll turn that off, and now I can add a bottom to it. I guess if I were creating this for myself, I wouldn't even bother with a bottom. So there's a trash can model made very quickly, made extremely easily here in Hexagon. And the, the technique of subdividing and the technique of looking at the characteristics of the object that you want to begin modeling before you even create one single polygon. I think uh, this will help you in every single future modeling project you have and it will help increase the speed and the flow as you work on your, your future projects. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Uh, have a good day.